they're still married and they're probably still hooking up with their wives or husbands. They're future faking you, thinking that at some point things are going to get better. Hey, what's up? Welcome back to Psychopath Exposure. My name is Kita and we talk about narcissists, psychopaths and toxic relationships here in this community. Welcome, if this is your first time here, I would appreciate if you subscribe to the channel so you can get more information delivered straight to your phone notifications every time I drop a new video. There's a lot of survivors that are sticking around to help one another because this is something that we've all been through. The patterns are the same, only the names and the faces have changed. So it's always helpful to share your stories, get the validation that you deserve, and help other victims of this narcissistic abuse to rise out of this entanglement and realize that life really does get better when you come out of this on the other side. That's a guarantee, but you have to do the work. So today I'm going to be talking about future faking. Future faking is just another act of manipulation orchestrated by narcissists, psychopaths, and toxic people. It's an act of manipulation that they use, it's a technique that they use, sometimes unintentionally, sometimes just at a subconscious level. It's just in their nature to do this type of thing. But it's manipulation. But it's done in order to keep you around, in order to keep their narcissistic supply, whoever it is that they're using at the moment, whoever is providing them with whatever resources they need, whatever it is that they have you in their life for they want to make sure that you don't go away so they make empty promises it's called future faking they promise you this incredible future they, they paint the scenario of how things are gonna get so much better if you just stick around for a little bit more if you just give them one more chance and they promise they're gonna make changes and they promise that things are gonna get better that when they cheated on you, it was just a phase that they were going through. It was just a phase. I was just infatuated with that person. But now I know. Now I know that I'll never find what I found with you and anyone else. Now I know that I don't love that other person. Now I know that I only have feelings for you. Now they start telling you dumb shit like that. It's just future faking. You see, we have to look at this for what it really is. Why is it that people stay in toxic relationships with narcissists, with psychopaths? Why is it that we put up with infidelity? Why is it that we put up with blatant acts of manipulation, gaslighting? Why is it that we put up with these feelings of anxiety that you have around your partner? They're supposed to be your person, and yet when they're around you, you have this upset stomach. When you're having conversations, you, you're a little hypervigilant. You're, you know they're not telling you the complete truth. You're not at rest. You're not at peace. You're on edge. You're walking on eggshells. Why is it that we stay with these predators? You really have to take a deep, hard look at the reasons why you would put up with unacceptable behavior with this type of abuse with, with people walking all over your boundaries and for a lot of people is that fear of being alone for some people it's just that desperate need that desperate desire to have a romantic partner to have someone that they can say hey yes I have a girlfriend I have a boyfriend this relationship is moving forward we're gonna get a house we're gonna have children it's just to know that they're not going to be alone forever because the thought of being alone in old age is scary. The thought of being alone, period, is scary if you don't have an active social circle, a, a kick-ass life where you're so present to the moment. You're so excited with the things that you do. You wake up, you tiptoe out of bed because you're excited to start your day because you have a lot of cool things to do. Even if a lot of those cool things is work, but you're in love with your work. You're in love. You're passionate with your work. 
So you're excited to get to work. You're excited to be busy. You're excited to do things. You're not constantly checking your phone, seeking validation on Instagram, seeing if people liked your photos, seeing if people on WhatsApp are, are texting you. You're too busy for that nonsense. You have a life. You actually have a life outside of that black mirror that you hold so close to your heart. Yes, that's right. We're talking about your phone. So you put up with abusive, unacceptable behavior from people that clearly, clearly don't have your best interest in mind. Selfish, toxic, disordered, sometimes evil individuals that we like to call psychopaths, narcissists. Why else would you put up with the things that they do? How much do you have invested in them already? Time? That's a sunk cost. That time is lost already. I don't care if it was a year, four years, ten years. That time is gone. The only time you have, it's really the time in front of you now. What are you going to do with the time you have left? No one knows how long they have to live. Why not make a change, right? Why not make a change and, and do something for yourself where you can experience better things in your life? Why stay with people that make you miserable? Why stay with people that give you anxiety? Why stay with the same person that created your PTSD, your post-traumatic stress disorder? Why stay with the same person that time and time again has lied to you, cheated on you, abused you, gaslighted you? In some cases, in a lot of cases actually, triangulated you with their new supply. That's right. And yet, they're able to paint this beautiful future scenario of how better things are going to be between the two of you. All of a sudden, all of a sudden they want to get married. All of a sudden, they're in love with you. All of a sudden, they want to have kids with you. All of a sudden, they want to take on your problems. All of a sudden, they want to give you everything they refused to give you before. All of a sudden, they're turning a new leaf overnight. They're promising to turn a new leaf overnight. Now remember, these are just words, not actions. It takes time to build that future faked idea that they're selling you on. It takes time. You can tell someone, yes, within six months, we're going to be married and we're going to have a house and you're going to be well in your first few months of pregnancy already. You can say that. You can say that. But what are you actually doing to prove that those wheels are in motion? Just words that you're saying at your most desperate time of need? Because yes, the narcissist feels that desperation. They feel that desperation too. That desperation that you feel that you might end up alone, that you might lose your partner, they feel that too. If they don't have an active harem with a lot of people on rotation, they'll be like, uh-oh, I'm going to lose the only source of supply that I got. They feel it and they freak out. They freak out. All of a sudden it hits them like a ton of bricks. That's why a lot of times they hoover. At first it seems like they don't care because they have someone else. But when they screw that up, because they always do, then, then they sit home in their darkest hour and they're like, damn, I can't just call this person anymore and just go spend the night and get, whatever, and get my needs met. I can't do that anymore because damn, I screwed that up. Well, let me try anyway. And if they know that you don't know what they are, if they know that time and time again they could just show up at your doorstep again or just call or text you, say a few lines that you want to hear, get you all riled up, get you all heated up, sweet talk you, and before you know it you're back together. If they know that they can continue doing that to you, they're going to keep doing it. Why would they stop? Guys, remember these, these individuals are not 
like you and I. They operate under different rules. They have a personality disorder. Like, for example, let's talk about pride. Like, you and I can have some pride and be like, hey, you know what? Also, pride comes with boundaries, too. And it's like, no matter what, I'm not going to break this boundary because you're a liar and you betrayed me. And I have too much pride to let you back in and then have to tell my friends, hey, I got back with my ex. You have too much pride to do that, right? The narcissist, they don't need to play by those rules. They don't care how foolish they look if they want something from you. They're going to do whatever it takes to get it. Remember, they're snakes. They're soulless snakes. They play a game. They wear a mask. It's a facade. Deep inside, they know that they're manipulating you. Deep inside, they feel powerful. So even though on the outside, they're looking weak and they're crying and they're, you know, crocodile tears and maybe some fake apologies here and there telling you what you need to hear allowing themselves to be under you and letting you have the power seat. Deep inside, they're laughing because they're like, I'm getting what I want. It's like that child that throws a fake tantrum when the parent denies them of the cookie or a toy or whatever it is that that child wants. And they instantly turn it on. And the parent that just doesn't want to hear the tantrum, they're like, okay, 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 here, just shut up. Here, here, here's your toy, here's your cookie. And then the child just turns it off instantly, instantly. The kid doesn't care that you think that, oh, wow, you're little, you, you manipulative son of a bitch. They don't, they're not thinking about that. All, the, all they know is that, okay, if I, if I throw a tantrum, if I start to cry, mama's going to give me what I want. That's the pattern. I want that. Do this. Get that. Okay, got it. That's the pattern. A to B. Easy, simple. That's what a narcissist does. That's what they do. That's why they continue to win. That's why they continue to come back and obliterate all the progress that you've made on yourself when they were away. Haven't you noticed how much better you feel when they're gone? And let's not confuse that with the trauma bond withdrawal symptoms that you feel. Let's not confuse the two. Better as far as your life does get better. For some reason, things start falling into place. Everything just starts working out. You're just dealing with the withdrawal symptoms from the trauma bond. And sometimes it feels like it's worse when they're gone. But if you look around you, things start getting better. When they're in your life, there's this dark energy. Things break, right? Pets die. You lose your job. Like just things just, all, all this negativity just manifests bad shit all around you. And the minute they're gone, you start noticing like, wow, I got this promotion. Wow, this, this, I met this person at a coffee shop. They were amazing. And it was, it was exactly what I was looking for. Like I had this problem and this person I hadn't heard from in like two years just called me. And, and they're going through the same thing and they gave me the answers I needed. And everything starts lining up and lining up and lining up. And then the narcissist shows up again. And bam, all the work you've done just turns into crap. Narcissist shows up again, you take them back, you get entangled back into that trap, and all the work you've done is gone. You're like, what the, I can't believe that I'm back in this same toxic cycle. Once again, knowing what I know, I'm back in hell. How did that happen? Well, how did that conversation go? How did that conversation go? What did they promise you? What did they tell you that you wanted to hear? I bet you it was future faking. Were they cheating on you? Was there another person? Was there another player in the game? What did they tell you about them? What were they telling you all this time? Oh, they're leaving the company. They're going to leave. They're, get, they, they got another, they're getting another job. They're leaving in two, they're leaving in two weeks. In two weeks, they're leaving the company. We won't see each other anymore. Can you wait two weeks? Just give me, give me space for two weeks. Why? So you can be knocking boots for two weeks every day behind my back? Go fuck yourself. Oh, they're moving to another city. 
We're not going to see each other anymore. Unless you decide to get in your car and drive three or four hours to see them. Oh, they're going through a cocaine addiction and I need to be there for them because I'm not just going to abandon them. They need, they, they, they need me. Really? They need you. So this is a new source of supply that just came into the game. That just came into the game. All of a sudden, they, they need you more than I need you. Have you ever, have you ever experienced that? Does that? How does that make you feel when you're toxic, evil, disordered, narcissistic predator of a partner that you thought was your person? How did it feel when they're sitting there watching you suffer, watching you going through all this anxiety and turmoil in your mind, and they're telling you, just give me a few more weeks so that I can sort things out and take care of that situation and be there for them because they're going to leave the company and then it's just going to be me and you forever. Like, who the hell is going to believe that? And yet you do. You believe it. If I had a nickel for every time I've gotten an email with a situation just like this, only the names, faces, and job titles were different. If I had a nickel, I would have a nice shiny silver dollar. Yeah. You know it's BS. It's future faking. After those two weeks, it's going to get pushed again. Oh, they couldn't, they couldn't find another job, so they're going to they're going to be here till the end of the month now. Oh, they're going into rehab now. And then they come back to the job and then they're seeing them and they're cheating on you every single day again. Oh, they won't leave me alone. See, I want to be with you. I want to be with you, but they keep sending me flowers. They keep doing all these things for me. Guys, is, is, is that not a red flag? Do, do, you, do you not see how they're keeping that source of supply? They're using that source of supply for all these things that they're getting. Yes, the flowers make them feel good. Yes, the money, the, the, the support, that makes them feel good. You want to be with them because you want a, a, a real human connection. You want to be with a romantic partner because you want human connection. You're not looking for material glory. You're not looking for that shit. You're looking for human connection just to have someone that you can cuddle with and watch movies with, go to dinner with, have pillow talk with. Yes, definitely have intimacy, but know that that's the only person you're having intimacy with. You don't have to worry about whether they're seeing someone else or, or, or having to play those stupid games. But narcissists, toxic people just want a meal ticket. They're only with you because of what you can provide for them. So don't you see, in that example alone, don't you see, they're future faking you to make sure you stick around because they like what you give them. But they're not getting rid of the other source of supply, which should already be a deal breaker. Because guys, let's admit, infidelity is a deal breaker. It's been a deal breaker since the beginning of time. As long as I've been in this planet, I've always understood that cheating and fidelity is a deal breaker. You can never trust someone that cheated on you. Cheating is not a mistake. It's not a mistake. At what point are we going to draw the line? Cheating is not a mistake. It was planned. There was attraction. You got together with the person. You made plans to see them for dinner, for lunch, for a walk after work. Whatever the heck may be, you met up at the gym, whatever it is, it was planned. You know you were attracted to that person and you made time to spend time with that person. You made time. What does that mean you made time? It means that instead of being with you, instead of being with you, they blocked out time to be with them, made sure that you weren't calling. They probably ghosted you for a few hours to be with them and then, oops, oops, I made a mistake. No, go fuck yourself. There's no mistake. Where do we draw the line? 
What else are you going to consider being a mistake? Oh, I accidentally killed your dog. I'm going to work on myself to make sure that never happens again. Please take me back. No, go bury yourself, you evil monster. No, it's time to wake up, guys. Wake up. This is future faking. They know that you know that they know. Okay? They know you know they know. And they're starting to panic. So now they start creating all these scenarios just to keep it, oh, oh, okay, yeah, yeah, okay, just a few more weeks, okay, yeah, in a month, yeah, in, in a month, in a month the, the divorce will come, yeah, the divorce will be settled finally and, and, and then we can be together. Ladies, it's been years, right? It's been years and that divorce is still pending, right? They're still married and they're probably still hooking up with their wives or husbands. They're future faking you thinking that at some point things are going to get better. But it's just funny, it never gets better. You know what happens instead? is another technique of manipulation called goal posting. And that's what happens when, you, when that, future fake, that future faked goal is reached, when you, when you arrive at that milestone, and then they just push that goal post a little bit further. And you're like, hey, wait, but you said, you said that by the end of this month, this person was out of your life. Why are we still talking about this other person? Why is this other person showing up on your caller ID? Future faking. Call them out on it. Call them out. They won't know what to tell you. They're just a bunch of word salad is going to come out. They're either going to throw a tantrum because you caught them on their bullshit. They're going to talk all sorts of word salad. Word salad is when they say a bunch of nonsense for two hours and nothing is solved and you, you, don't even know what the hell, you don't even know what the heck they're even talking about. They don't even know. They're just yap, 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 yap. It's, it's, to, it's to weaken your mind. It just weakens you because you get, you get drained. Remember, you're, you're listening to poison. Poisonous words by a snake. You're being poisoned. Your brain is being turned into mush when they word salad you. And I'll do a video on that because, they, man, these narcissists do that all the time all the time. Call them out. Call them out on the bullshit. You got to start taking action and taking steps to, to empower you again. I know a lot of you are scared to confront your narcissist. I know a lot of you are scared of being alone. You're scared of, oh my God, what am I going to do? <sighs> what am I going to do if they actually leave me for real? You might actually be happy. You just don't know because you haven't experienced it yet. All you've experienced have been this toxic cycle, this trauma bond over and over and over again. You're addicted to them. You're just addicted. So you buy into the bullshit. You buy into the future faking. You buy into the empty promises. You buy into the goal posting. But nothing ever changes, does it? Nothing ever changes. If you were to talk to the other supplier, you'd realize they're doing the same thing to them. Just a little nuanced here and there. It's crazy. But it's true. And you know it's true. You know it's true. Your soul is screaming at you. You know it's true. You're just too scared to end it. What if I told you that life gets better on the other side of this? Would you believe me? I, everyone that's watching this video right now, if you have survived a toxic relationship with a psychopath, with a narcissist, with someone with a personality disorder where they future fake you and give you all these empty promises and goal posting, and if you survived that and you got out, I want you to leave a comment right now and share your experience and how much better your life has gotten. I don't want to hear about how horrible it was the first few weeks or the first few months that you were going, getting through the trauma bond. I want to hear about how much better your life got once you got your power back, once you woke up and you started living your life the way you used to live it before you got entangled with this poisonous snake. Because let me tell you, there is a light at the end of the tunnel, but the psychopath blinds you. It blinds you so you can't see the light. It fogs your brain, it clouds your vision with darkness so you can't see the light. It lies to you. They tell you there is no light. You're not going to meet someone better 
If I'm gone, you'll never meet someone like me. And you believe it. You drink the poison. You believe their lies. You buy into the future faking. And then you ask yourself, how in the hell am I still in this shit? It's a horrible, horrible situation to be. Horrible situation to be. And meanwhile, they're out there plundering, repeating, their, repeating those patterns till the day they die because they have a personality disorder. And as far as I'm concerned, there's no way to fix that and there's no cure. If you want to survive, you just got to be the hell out. I don't care how many kids you have. I don't care about your house. If you want to be happy, joyous, and free, if that's what you want, listen to what I'm saying. If that's what you want, you cannot be entangled with these predators. It doesn't work any other way. You can't experience gratitude if you're living in fear. They're conflicting, they're conflicting thought patterns. When you're in gratitude, there is no fear in your heart at that moment. And when you're in fear, you don't feel grateful. They're conflicting energies, right? Conflicting frequencies. It works the same way. If you're entangled with a toxic predator like a narcissist, like a psychopath, someone with borderline personality disorder, any type, of, an addict. These, these people, the energy that these people have, the darkness that surrounds them, does not allow you to flourish. It only brings you down. You can't be happy, joyous, and free. You can't be happy when you're living in anxiety. And the person that's causing that anxiety is the one that you call your person. You know the logic is there. The writing's on the wall. You're just emotionally attached to them, that's all. That's why people don't understand this shit. Unless you've been through this and you understand, holy crap. I actually, I'm emotionally attached to this abusive piece of shit. Logically, I know they're no good for me. Their entire existence, their, their lifestyle just doesn't work with mine. And yet I can't stop thinking about them. I can't stop letting them take advantage of me. I can't stop. But you're going to have to. Because this cycle will continue to repeat itself over and over and over again. The time is going to pass anyway between now and whenever the final discard happens. Because there does come a time. There does come a time. Where they just totally, totally, totally crush you. And then they, they leave you to rot. And they want nothing else to do with you. And there's no more hoovering. Don't wait for that to happen. Don't wait for that day to arrive. You got to do this preemptively. And let me tell you why you got to do it preemptively. There's just something about knowing that you're in control. And that you are responsible for your own outcomes in life. Feels kind of shitty to know that you were discarded, but it feels a lot more empowering when you know that you discovered that your abuser was manipulating you, was scamming you, that you were duped by someone you trusted, someone you loved, but you wisened up and you preemptively ended and severed that entanglement before things got worse. And when you do that, then you'll know what it is to really be in the power seat. In the power seat of your life. It's a good place to be. You can dictate your outcomes. You can dictate your future. You no longer need the narcissist's validation, which they never even give you, but you no longer need their approval or their presence in your life to flourish because it was all fake. It was all one big future fake. If you need help getting through this situation, if you need a slap in the face figuratively, not literally, figuratively, reach out to me at, at info at psychopathexposure.com. I do have a private one-on-one -on -one coaching program so we can work together. We talk about the stuff that's going on. I can really help you get focused here. I can really show you the things that are going on in your relationship. I can really call out what you know to be true but your emotions are clouding, are clouding your vision. 
I can be that voice of reason. I work with a lot of people. I've worked with hundreds of people. And you'd be surprised how, how, how rapidly change starts taking place in their life. Because this is all about change. We've been stuck in the situation because we were afraid of change. We were hoping for positive change to just miraculously happen. Doing the same things, expecting different results. Always living in fear. Oh, well, if I do this, I'm not going to have them anymore. Yeah, that, that's right. You're not. You're not going to have the abuser anymore. Isn't th I mean, doesn't that sound amazing, really? But if it doesn't sound amazing, if it makes you sad, if it makes you cry at the thought of not having this abusive, manipulative liar, cheater, deceptor in your life. Is that even a word? I think it's a word. I think it's a transformer. But if it doesn't get you excited to be rid of this person, to, to end this relationship, you're probably trauma bonded. Probably trauma bonded to the psychopath or to the narcissist. And we can work together on that. Because I've been through this. It's the worst thing that ever happened to me. But I found my way out. I worked with a mentor myself. And it was just incredible how quickly life started getting better the minute I distanced myself from these abusive predators. Because that's what they are. They are predators. They are. And they've convinced us that we're their prey. They've convinced us that without them we're nothing. But that's not true. That's not true. It's all smoke and mirrors. It's all smoke and mirrors. That's how they survive. They survive through lies, through deceit, through future faking. And they just keep duping and duping and duping their new, their new victims time and time again. So if you're ready, if you're serious, you really want to work together, just visit my website, psychopathexposure.com front slash coaching, or shoot me an email. And I'll get right back to you with details on how we can schedule a private one-on-one -on -one coaching session and we can start working together to end this nightmare. In the meantime, I really encourage you guys to share your experiences in the comments below. If you got any value, any value out of this video, please share the video and hit a like, thumbs up. And um, really hope you guys are having a good day. Really hope you guys are starting to wake up to the truth and starting to feel a little empowered. The more videos you watch, the more you share with the community. And as always, I hope to see you guys in the next video. My name is Kita. This is Psychopath Exposure. Remember to subscribe and click on that little bell icon so that you can get notified every time I drop a new video. Stay vigilant, stay strong, stay on the rise, and I'll talk to you guys next time. Peace.